So this is a video on linearization and using differentials. I have over here um, some problems chosen from the book, and they are of, I guess, the three major types that you encounter in the, the section of the book on differentials and linear approximation. Um, so the first one is just to find the linearization. And the second one is to find the differential and evaluate it for a given value. And the last one is, is you know, either the hard one or the only one that's worth doing, depending on your point of view. Um, because you do actually want to use differentials to do things. So in the third question, we're going to use differentials to estimate error. Okay, so let's just start with the first one. <clears throat> So it's it's really really simple. If you know, if you know the formula for the linear approximation of f at a, and the formula for that we've been over it several times. It's really just point slope form in disguise. Um, so this is f of a plus f prime of a uh, times x minus a. And um, just as an exercise, convince yourself that this is just point-slope form. I'm not going to do it because I think it might be um, more distracting than helpful. But that's the formula for the linearization. And I guess we're done, but I think a was supposed to be some particular value, and I forgot that part. So let's say that a is equal to 1. Then the linear approximation uh, to f at a becomes... L of x equals, what happens when we plug 1 in here? We get 1 plus 3 is 4. And now what's the derivative of this thing? It is uh, 4x cubed plus 6x. And here we're supposed to plug 1 into the derivative, so that's 4 plus 6 is 10. And then this part just becomes x minus 1. And then if you want, you can put this in, you know, y equals mx plus b form. And that would be 10x uh, minus 6. So this would be a, a line that describes the, the tangent line to this function at the point 1. And we could even do it over here if you, if you want. I know some people probably get mad when Sage comes up, but let's do it. So f of x is the function x to the fourth power. Um, plus 3 times x squared, and the linear approximation is going to be, uh, let's see, f of uh, 1 plus the derivative of f with respect to x evaluated at 1 times x minus 1. And, um, okay, so... There those are, and let's plot those things together. So let's plot f and also plot l. And hopefully we'll get 1 in the domain. Oh, we didn't. So I'm going to change this so that we can see where 1 is. So let's go from 0 to 2, and from 0 to 2 over here. I'm just changing the domain or the um, scale of the graph. All right. So you can see that L is just the the linear approximation to F at, at A equals 1 is just the tangent line at 1. And that's all there is to the, this problem, really simple. So let's go on to the next thing. Right. And again, <coughs> this is just uh, filling in a formula. So you have to know the formula, the formula for, for the differential uh, dy is equal to, um, in general, it's equal to f prime of x times dx. We're just going to use that formula in this case. So dy is going to be equal to the derivative of tangent is secant squared, secant squared x times dx. And now we're supposed to plug in these particular values, x equals 0 and dx equals Four over 100. They don't say whether this is radians or degrees, and it actually does make a difference. And I'll talk about that in the next problem. But let's assume for simplicity that this is supposed to, that x is in, in radians. Then in that case, you don't have anything to worry about. You just do what I just did, and now we'll do dy is equal to, um, what is uh, secant of 0? 
that's going to be one. It's going to be one, right? Because secant, just by definition, is one over cosine. And when you put zero into cosine, it becomes one. So this is really just one. But let me write it out like this first. So secant squared of zero uh, times uh, 0 0.04 becomes uh, 1 times 0 0.04, which is just 0 0.04, or in other words, 4 over 100. And that's it, very easy. So now let's go on to do the third uh, problem. And this one is strangely tricky in a way that I'll describe when we get to the tricky part. So it says one side of a right triangle is known to be 20 centimeters. So before I even read the rest, I know that I'm supposed to be drawing a right triangle. And one side of this triangle is supposed to be 20 centimeters, and they're talking about the opposite angle is 30 degrees. So let's draw the picture like this. So let's say this is 30 degrees, and the opposite side is uh, 20 centimeters. And here's the hypotenuse H. And uh, OK. so. The angle is measured with a possible error of 1%. So let's just translate this here. So theta is going to be the angle in degrees, and they're saying that theta is equal to 30. And d theta is the error in measuring the input value. Uh, and that is 1% or 1 over 100, however you want to think of it. OK, so those are the facts. Now we're supposed to use differentials to estimate the error in computing the length of the hypotenuse. So this is dh. So really, this is just a, an exercise just like the previous one, where all we have to do is use this formula. The letters are different. Instead of y and x, we have h and theta, but it's basically the same. Okay. So before we figure out dh, you know, well, we could go further. This is going to be h prime times uh, d theta. Okay. So the question is, what is h prime? And so we should write down what h is. So what is h? Um, I don't know. I'm not going to start there. I'm going to start down with. I'm going to write down what I know. <clears throat> what I know is Sokotoa, and Sokotoa says that sine of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So let me write that down first. So sine theta is equal to, notice that I'm not writing sine 30, I'm writing sine theta. Um, sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, so 20 over h. And if you solve for h here, then you get h is equal to uh, 20 over sine theta. And if you want to, uh, you could recognize this as 20 times cosecant theta, just because that's the definition of cosecant, but that's not super important. So let's just write this. 20 cosecant theta. All right, um, so now we just need to do dh, right? So dh is going to be h prime. So what is h prime? Uh, so these, you know, in the co-world, it works just like in the, um, so th this is just like the derivative of secant, but negative, or maybe that I should just shut up and write the answer. So just like the derivative of secant is secant tangent, the derivative of cosecant is cosecant times cotangent, but it's negative. So we've got cosecant theta, cotangent theta. And if you're, you know, some people are like non-trigatarians. They just don't do trigonometry. They've sort of written it off. And I know this can be a little bit intimidating, but um, you can't be a non-trigatarian. And if you don't like taking the derivative of cosecant or you don't want to memorize another formula, just use the quotient rule here, and you'll get the you'll get the right answer. If you don't like to use the quotient rule, then think of it as 20 times sine to the minus 1 power, and then use the chain rule. You've got three ways to do this uh, derivative. So now dh is equal to minus 20 times cosecant theta, uh, cotangent theta, d theta. All right, <clears throat> so this is very easy, and you know I would give you 
90% credit if you did this, but we're supposed to plug in um, these actual values for theta and d theta, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Um, why did I write t here? Thanks for being patient with me. So let's say that I do plug in uh, 30 here. Okay, so I've got um, minus 20 times cosecant uh, 30 degrees times cotangent. Oh, I, I, there was a t just because I forgot to write the variable. Um, I'm cotangent theta, or which in this case is 30 degrees and times d theta, which is 1 over 100. All right, and we could figure out what all of these things are. Oh, by the way, so I've already made the mistake. What I just did is wrong. And isn't it kind of silly? Can, so pause the video and kind of think about what I just did wrong. I think I've done this problem wrong, like, for years. And just today, because I was carefully checking my work, I noticed that, I noticed that there is a mistake in what I just did. It's kind of subtle. Um, so here's the problem basically is that this is in degrees and to make things come out right you have to convert that to radians which means multiplying by pi over uh, 180 um, yeah so very strange and why do you have to do that that's because if you take the derivative of trig functions, the derivative is one thing if the trig function is assumed to be a function of radians, and it's another thing if you assume that the trig function is a function of degrees. If, if you want to know more about that, I'll refer you to a problem in the book that, that discusses it, or you could just take my word for it. You just have to convert d theta to radians. And if you do that, then you'll get the right answer. So let's go down here and um, let's see. So 30 degrees is uh, pi over 6, and I don't think there's any way to convert sage to degrees, so I'm going to enter it in radians as pi over 6 um, times cotangent uh, pi over 6 and times 0 0.01 times pi over 180 converts it to radians. And this is the answer, but, you know, we want to know an actual number. So this is how you use it to give you a number. Uh, not quite, pretty close to how you do it. Um, and oops, it's supposed to be n. Okay, so there it is. You can see that it's negative, um, negative 0.012. So we've answered part of the question. The first part of the question is, use differentials to estimate the error in computing the length of the hypotenuse. So the meaning of this number is that if the input is off by at most 1%, then if you use this value that you found in your measurement to compute the hypotenuse, the output, in other words, the hypotenuse, is going to be off by at most this many centimeters. So that's what it means. Um, let's go up, though. I, I did some other things here uh, because I was checking my work carefully, and that's when I noticed that's when I noticed the mistake about converting d theta to uh, radians. Okay, so ignore that first thing. So we've just got h is twenty over sine theta. If you plug pi over six, so this is you know pi over six is is thirty degrees. Um, so look at this. This is, what have I done here? This is equal to um, delta H. I can't write delta H, but you know what I mean. So this is delta H when, when the change is 1%. Um, so delta H should be approximately equal to DH, and that's when I noticed something was, was a little screwy. This is what the function h looks like in a neighborhood of uh, pi over 6. So this is pi over 6 right here. And this is the, the point um, h 
as a, as a function of theta when theta is pi over 6. Now let's compute the, the, the linear approximation just like we did for part 1. Right? So that's just the linear approximation. Now we can plot h and the linear approximation together. And the linear approximation is in red, and you can see that they're, they're very close. Okay. And down here, look at this. So do you know what this is? What, this, is the, this is the difference in the values of the linear approximations when you go over by 1%. And this is what we call dh. Um, so you could, I mean, it helps to know this fact. What dh really is is the, the, the change in the linear approximation when the input changes by d of the input. So in this case, d theta. And it's this value which should be the same as what we got by computing it the other way, right? So look, it's 0 0.01209. So um, down here we got 0 0.01209. They have to match, and that's, that's what made me realize I was doing it wrong when I didn't convert d theta to radians. Um, this is a, um, what is this? I'm not sure. Oh, this is the this is the percentage error, which is the next thing that we're supposed to do. Um, so right here it says part B. What is the percentage error? So how do we get that? Um, so first you have to find the relative error, and the relative error is dH over h. So this is called the relative error. And the percentage error just comes from com converting the relative error to a percentage. So um, the relative error, it's, it's nice to do it symbolically at first because some things cancel out. So dh is equal to, um, it's right here, minus 20 cosecant theta, cotangent theta, d theta. And what is, oh, sorry. What is h equal to h here is um, 20 over sine theta, otherwise known as 20 times cosecant theta. So down here I'll write 20 cosecant theta. And so this is minus cotangent theta d theta. And look at that, I have a real problem um, leaving the variable out for cotangent. And that's it. Uh, but we have to deal with our particular values. Um, theta equals pi over 6. And, well, I can't say that. So because d theta is in the same units, which is degrees, so I should say this. So when you plug in these values, this is the number that you should get. Right here, you can see I'm actually doing this. So here's dh, and I just divide by h with pi over 6 plugged in, and then multiply it times uh, 100 to make it a percentage. So the answer is this percent. So the final answer, um, the percentage error is minus 0.03%. Okay. And that lets you know how big the error is relative, how much the, the error that you got actually matters. So in this case, not very much because it's small compared to um, the magnitude of the hypotenuse. So when the error is small compared to the magnitude of the thing, that means that the error is negligible. So it's negligible in this case. And that's the end of the video. Now you've got to watch me try to turn this thing off.